Hello and welcome to another slice of Daily Bread. I'm so glad that you have joined me today. Now, I recently heard two stories that took place about the year 1800. And today on Daily Bread, I'd like to share those two stories with you. But before we begin, as we always do, let's open with a word of prayer. Lord, thank you so much for your blessings towards us. We thank you for this beautiful day. And I pray that as we open your word, as we study its sacred pages, may your spirit lead us and guide us. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Mary Jones was born in 1784 in the Welsh countryside. Mary, as she was growing up, desired to learn how to read. Now, why did she want to learn how to read? Because she wanted to be able to read the Bible. You see, in that time, the Bible was not very accessible to the people of the Welsh countryside. The only time they heard the Bible was when it was read at church or at prayer meeting. And Mary liked the things that she was hearing, and so she desperately wanted to learn how to read. Unfortunately, there was no school in her town, and so she wasn't able to learn how to read. One day, her father did come home and tell her the good news that there was a school that was opening up not too far away, and Mary could learn how to read. Of course, the school took her an hour to walk to every single day, an hour there and an hour back. But Mary loved it because she was learning how to read. And she, it, was, it wasn't long before she rose to the top of her class. Now, she did have some friends that, were, that did have a Bible, and she was able to go visit them. They live, lived about two miles from her home, and she was on the weekend able to go to their house and read the Bible for herself. And as she read the Bible for herself, it just fueled the fire of wanting to learn more and more about the Bible. And so she decided she had to have one of a Bible for herself. And so she started doing all sorts of odd jobs and saving pennies so that she could purchase a Bible. She would clean chicken coops. She would help feed the chickens. She would gather the eggs. She would do sewing. She would do babysitting. She would do whatever necessary for her to save a little bit of money so that she could purchase a Bible. Unfortunately, her father did fall ill, and so she had to use some of her money to help support the family. But after six long years, Mary was finally able to purchase her own Bible. She had enough money to, but therein lies another problem. She didn't know where to purchase a Bible. She couldn't just go into town and purchase a Welsh Bible because they just didn't exist. There was no shops in town that were able to sell her a Bible. And so she was thinking long and hard how she could get a hold of a Bible. Well, she did see that her teacher had a Bible. And she's like, where did you get that Bible? And they said it was in a town of Bala, which was about 25 miles from where she lived. And so one day, Mary started the trek towards Bala. She walked 25 miles that day just so that she could purchase a Bible. She got there late in the day and she was able to stay at the home of one of the ministers there in town. And the very next day, she, he took her to Thomas Charles, who was a bookseller and could sell her a Bible. And as they walked into his shop and they explained the story, she explained how she had gotten her money and how she really desperately wanted to have a Bible. Now, Mr. Charles was broken up because he didn't have a Bible to sell to her. He didn't have any Welsh Bibles that she could buy. The three that he had in the shop were all taken by other people. They were reserved. And when he explained this to Mary, Mary couldn't bear the thought of traveling those 25 miles home without a Bible. And she began to sob uncontrollably. Well, Mr. Charles was overtaken by what he witnessed. And he says, you know, there is one of these Bibles that was reserved for a gentleman that also speaks English. 
And so I will sell you his Bible and he can have an English Bible. That way each one of you will be able to get a Bible. Well, Mary was delighted beyond delighted and she paid for her Bible and she practically ran the, all the way home so that she could read her Bible that night. You know, not long after that, uh, Thomas Charles was in a meeting and he was so overwhelmed. He was so inspired by the story of Mary and he shared it with others. And through many providence, he decided he wanted to invite the people to start a Welsh Bible society based on Mary's story. Somebody stood up and said, you know, that's nice for, for, for the Welsh people, but what about Britain? What about the world? What about everybody else? And so instead of starting the Welsh Bible Society, they started the British and Foreign Bible Society. And many, over 200 million copies in the next 100 years were given out by the uh, British and Foreign Bible Society. So we see how important the Bible was to Mary. But I have a question for you today. How important is the Bible for you? How many miles would you walk? How important is the Bible? Is it something that you read every single day? Is it, or is it something that just kind of sits on the shelf and collects dust and every so often you take it to church and then put it back on the shelf? Well, we're told in Psalm 119, verse 105, that thy word is a lamp unto thy feet and a light unto thy path. God's word lights the pathway of our lives. It helps us to see things in a better light and an eternal light. Jesus tells a parable in Matthew chapter 13. It's the pearl of great price. It's this... Uh, and it's found in Matthew 13, verses 45 and 46. And it says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. This merchant found this pearl of great price, and he saw the value that was within this pearl, and he greatly desired it. He sold all that he had because it was worth all of that just to have that pearl of great price. Here we can say the Bible is that pearl of great price, that it is worth far more than rubies. It is something worth obtaining. You know, I've heard many excuses over the years of why people don't read the Bible like they should. You know, some say, well, it's, it's a little too boring. It's, it's, uh, it's not for me. Or another excuse I've heard is, well, I don't have enough time to read it. There's just so many hours in the day and I'm just too busy and I just don't have time for the Bible. I recently saw a post on Facebook. Now, I'm not a big proponent of Facebook. Yeah, I have a Facebook account and I do uh, share pictures from, from time to time, but it's one of those things that kind of sucks you in once you start looking through posts. But I saw this post and it ca caught my eye. It was somebody sharing a post from a gentleman by the name of Andrew McChesney. He's an editor for Adventist or, uh, yeah, Adventist Mission. He was a former news editor for the Adventist Review. And this was his post. He said, This morning I read the reason why our lives are filled with, and then he's got this big long list, computer games, movies, television, big politics, sports matches, storybooks, or what I might call novels, and Facebook. So he says he learns why all of these are in our lives. And then he quotes Great Controversy, page number 519. And it says, Satan well knows that all whom he can lead to neglect prayer and the searching of scriptures will be overcome by his attacks. Therefore, he invents every possible device to engross the mind. You see, Satan is trying to distract us from the important things of this life. And he realizes that what works for one doesn't always work for another. So I'll give you an example. I have a relative that's really big into 
politics and he's always talking politics here's what's happening especially with the election that we had last year and me personally i don't really like politics i can't really follow it it's just i have a hard time following it and it's just not something that speaks to me now my relative does not like sports he doesn't really follow any of the the big major sports now i like watching baseball and football and these types of things and so Politics works for my relative, but for me, sports works. And so what the devil realizes is that he needs to concoct all different type of things to get us all distracted. And it doesn't even have to be the television or the movies or the computer games or any of this type of stuff. Sometimes just keeping us busy in the hurried life is what keeps us down and keeps us away from the scriptures. You know. He's just really, like I said earlier, trying to distract us so that we don't see how important, so we don't have enough time. And then you look at some of these other things. They're also way more exciting with some of the movies and the TV shows and the computer games and you know even sports and politics. It's all way more exciting. And then we get to the Bible and we do a little bit of study and we, oh, we find it all so boring and so Therefore, we neglect it because all these other things are just way more exciting to us. I told you at the beginning that I had two stories from about the year 1800. And the second story is about 12-year-old Conrad Reed. Now, he decided to skip church one day, which I don't recommend. But he and his uh, brothers and sisters decided to go fishing. And so they were fishing this creek that was out on their property. And they see something glowing and kind of yellow down in the creek bank. And so they go in and they're kind of digging at it and they pull it out. And here's a 17 pound rock. And they take it home and they, uh, it works great for a doorstop. So they kept it there as a doorstop for three years. Finally, their father, John, decided, let me take it to a jeweler and see if this thing's worth anything. And so he takes it to the jeweler and the jeweler says, yeah, that's, uh, that's gold there. That's a 17 pound gold nugget that you have there. And he offered to refine the, the gold for him. So he said, sure. And so he came back a couple weeks later, the a nice gold bar there. And uh, he says, the jeweler offered John, he said, I will, I'll buy this for you. You just name your price. Now, unfortunately, John did not realize what he had. And so he sold that 17 pound gold nugget for $3.50. You know, friends, is it possible that we have a gold nugget sitting up, our up on our shelves in the form of the Bible? This gold nugget, this treasure trove of information is sitting on our, on our uh, shelf and we're not reading it. We're not understanding the value that we have sitting right there on our, chair, on, our, on our shelf. I encourage you every day with daily bread at the end, I encourage you to pick up God's word and study it, to spend some time in it. And I'm right here, right now, I am encouraging you the exact same thing. You know, Conrad's father, John, the story does end up in a happy place. Because later on, John went ahead and he mined that whole creek where they had found that 17 pound gold nugget. And they found lots more nuggets like it and John became a very wealthy man because of it. You know, friends, when we dig into God's word, when we mine it for its treasure, we will be very, very wealthy. We will find treasure once we dig in and search it. I mentioned Andrew McChesney earlier and the post that he put on Facebook. I didn't include the very end of his post, which I'm going to do at this, at this moment. He mentions the reason why all of these things are in, his, in our lives. And then he says at the very end, he says, let's focus on the important things. Above all, let's remember to pray and search the scriptures. And to that, I say, amen. Let's dig into God's word today. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this wonderful, 
wonderful gold nugget, uh, the treasure of the Bible that you have given each one of us. And I pray, Lord, that uh, you will give us the wisdom and the knowledge and just give us the understanding. Give us the desire, Lord, to open thy word, to study it, and to gain the treasures that are contained therein. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.